Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. You know, today we're going to be talking about the art of sales. Many people today, they really don't want anything to do with sales, and sales has kind of gotten a bad rap over the last few decades. In fact, uh, every company out there, at some level of that company, there's a sale taking place or service being provided to generate revenue for the rest of that business. But many people don't understand that their security of their family and their security of their future is based on sales. And today we're going to be talking with uh, sales professional Dave Clark. Dave's been out there for over 30 years. Dave, uh, very successful entrepreneur and salesman. And we're also going to be here discussing not only what it takes to be a professional salesman, but what it takes to build a team of professional salesmen and go to the really the elite level. Uh, we're also going to be here with my dear friend Margot Bush who's on the show. Uh, Margot is a very astute entrepreneur as well, and uh, many of you see that we, we go way back and we have her as our co-host tonight. So uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. we got an amazing show. Stay with us. Real estate today offers incredible opportunities, low prices, and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beat. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm here with my dear friend, Margo Bush. Margo, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> we were arguing be we are. between the break. We, <laughs> we are. argue like old married couple. Uh, Margo is a very dear friend of mine. We've been together for a long time. We've done a lot of business together. And um, how, how have things been with you? Good, good. It's a lot of rain. And, uh, yeah. But we, we have had a lot of rain in the pan in the uh, Gulf Coast where we're at, and I actually feel guilty about mentioning how much rain we've had when the country's been in this drought. Yeah, I know it. But it's, uh, uh, enough is enough. I wish yeah, that we could. Yeah, the rain needs to go to the people that need, need it. it. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. us. <laughs> How's the Margo's also a publisher, book publisher? How's the publishing business? Publishing co uh, company is great and uh, doing books, and I'm telling you, there's some great stories that. I, I get very excited about sometimes yeah. because the stories are just incredible. People have amazing stories that really need to be told. And well, I, I had the pr uh, privilege last weekend to sit down with one of your authors and we had dinner. Yes. And um, uh, Brian Jackson, who's actually been on our show. Yeah. Amazing story. And um, But I know you always have interesting people. So when you let me hang out with you, I get to I know. <laughs> That's right. I went over the weekend. I took uh, a friend of mine. We went and saw the new born. Uh, I know. Jason I cannot Bourne believe movie. you went and just see that without me. Well, because you kind know of a guy how much thing I love. And... I, well, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it was good though. <laughs> There's been a lot of people saying they didn't like it as much without uh, Matt Damon, but I thought it was really good. The first hour was more dialogue than normal, but they had to kind of set up the new. Yeah. But I'll but tell you what, this new guy. Really? It's good. Renner. Well, you d you can't go see The Expendables without me because, you no, know, we, okay, thank you. <laughs> we, we, we saw it's The Expendables. It's I'll see it, but yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm glad you could join us. We have an amazing guest today, Dave Clark. I, I know that you know Dave a little bit. I do know Dave, and you know, um, you d we're talking about sales in the intro and <laughs> we have a we have a story about that can i tell it a little bit uh, the short version the short 
Well, um, you know, I mean, most of the people know that um, when I came to you, it was because my husband suddenly passed away and I was uh, left with a business that I did not know how to run. I had 4,200 square feet of uh, publishing, uh, you know, uh, equipment and, and um, printing equipment. And uh, so I. Yeah, I didn't felt know like many I, people don't. I didn't know Margo at all. I was doing a seminar right. several hours away from where you live. Right. Her husband passed away very early, 50 years old, very unexpectedly. Yeah, really. And so she had come to one of the seminars and was in the audience, and we briefly met. And then wound up, we spent, I guess, a couple of days later, we got together. You t kind of told me your story. I did. I told you my story. I, well, I first. Uh, Which was very recent from when Bill yes, passed away. Uh, it was, it's, uh, it was only about a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard about where you were. I, I needed some business education. At least I felt like I did. And um, I went and sat in one of your seminars and came unglued, knew that I felt like that it was an answer for me. And, uh, but the story is, is that once I, so I came to one of your, your seminars and, and uh, then took some classes, and, but I told you one day <laughs> that I said, Mr. Vega, I, I literally raised my hand and said, Mr. Vega, could you please teach me how to do business and make millions how to be a millionaire and how to be a millionaire <laughs> but i ha want nothing to do with sales yeah at and, all <laughs> it's i hate we it talked about. and i don't like it so right. could you teach me how to do it without any kind of sales and he looked at me and he goes i remember him just looking at me like are you just an idiot Is this or surreal? what but he was so nice that he never said anything and he goes okay yeah okay well, You've come a long way since I, then. I have. Now. But as we talk, you know, obviously every company in the world, at some level of that company, you know, yeah. there's a sale taking place yeah. or a service being provided to generate revenue for everybody else. So um, whether we're in the sales department or not is one thing, but our security is based on somebody in that company making a sale of a service or product. So if we lay bricks for a living, we might not think we're in sales. But somebody has to go out there and bid some jobs face to face, sell right. some bricks, right. or they don't have a job. And it's like that with every company. So I remember when you asked me that, you said, you know, I want to be a millionaire, but I definitely don't want to have anything to do with sales and, uh, or, or even affiliated with sales. Right. How, can you do that for me? I actually was thinking, like, is this a riddle? <laughs> I mean, is this, is this? No, it but, wasn't uh, a riddle. I but, seriously did not. I mean, I, I, I have come a long way yes, when you absolutely. say because. I mean, I literally really knew nothing about business. My husband, um, I could work if I wanted to. If I didn't want to, I didn't have to work. Um, and so I literally did not know how to run a company. We have been through some things, haven't we? We, uh, yes. Many of you know that at one point in time we were in Africa together and uh, I, we got ambushed at an intersection and almost lost my life. I talked about it, I think, on the first episode. Yeah. But Margo was with me in the back seat. So we've been through some pr pretty... Yes, crying, times. crying, and, and some uh, great times, and, and great times. Great times. So, yeah, we have. I mean, uh, it's been a long journey, and it uh, has been. I followed you all the way to Florida. Yep. And uh, so. well, we appreciate you, and um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to be talking with uh, entrepreneur Dave Clark. Uh, Dave is actually a professional salesman. He's been out he there really over is. 30 years, and you know, over the years, people have kind of shied away from the word salesman. I know when I used to run companies, we would do hire, hiring for salesmen and they would be like, is this a sales job? I don't want to do anything with sales. And uh, a lot of people have given that industry a really bad name, but you know, sales is still what makes the world go round. Yep. And we're gonna talk to a real professional. When we get back, we'll be speaking with Dave Clark. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Real Estate Today offers incredible opportunities, low prices, and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. 
More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Today on our show, we have uh, entrepreneur Dave Clark. Dave is a sales specialist, so please give him a big hand, Mr. Dave Clark. How are you doing? My friend, how are you? First of all, Dave, <laughs> I appreciate you being a fan of the show. I love what you're doing. And um, tell me what I owe you later, would you? They told me I get free coffee. Oh, free coffee. Well, we have it. You know, and speaking of coffee, uh, that's not a setup. But uh, speaking of coffee, we have our coffee provided by our very uh, good friends, Dave and Becky Schultes from Organo Gold. It's a healthy coffee. Actually, this here is uh, Cafe Supreme. And uh, it's got ginseng and all these other healthy ones. I'm drinking the regular black, black coffee. coffee with a little bit of vanilla. So, and you, I think we give we give our we start our guests on water, and then we kind of upgrade you from there. <laughs> but uh, how have you been, my friend? Very good, very good. Good, good. And uh, how's the world of sales still out there? Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. It's still there. Still doing good. Me and Dave have a very similar uh, sales background. Know a lot of the same people, right? Yep. So we both came out. Uh, as a very young guy, uh, I, had, I was fortunate enough to have some really successful people interested in me for different math abilities. And I, I was really privileged to get in this great room of people and have these very successful people take an interest in me. But a guy uh, we talked about this gave me some really good advice and he says, you know, with what your skill is, uh, you're going to have access to the greatest information on the planet and the best mentors on the planet. But he said that, um, you know, knowledge is an experience. Education is an experience. So he says you need to get some experience. And our recommendation is, is get into direct sales. Uh, maybe even the hard, you know, canvassing. Get, do something hard because if you want to learn business and you want to learn people, that's the experience you need. And I actually took his advice. I think I was 18 and a half. I started selling vacuum cleaners door to door on a straight commission and eventually work my way up to numerous companies. And I know you have a very similar uh, experience. Yes, I, I started out uh, selling alarms door to door, knocking door to door, never done it before. And the one thing is you learn very quickly that you've got to develop an attitude. Yeah. Uh, no, no quit, you know, just keep going at it. The biggest thing is, is overcoming your own fears. Yeah. I always found out the hardest door to get out of was my door. That's right. <laughs> or get in the yeah. car. Or get in the car. Go, yeah. But it took a while to get, once you get that, and understand the concept of everything in sales is a numbers game. Yeah, and many people feel like, you know, sales isn't really a, a profession. It's like, you know, I got laid off from my corporate job, so, you know, in the meantime, while I'm looking, I'll take this little sales job uh, on the side. And really, that's the wrong way to look at it. Sales is a, is a profession. It's really a profession, and it's still the highest paid profession. You know, if you talk to some really successful people like, you know, Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, and you ask them, are you into the market, are you into technology, or are you into sales? Uh, that would, you know, they're into sales. Um, brokering those big deals between other companies, that's really uh, the highest paid profession. But it's also one of the most secure professions. It really is. it doesn't matter where you go, whatever product Completely you're selling, mobile. If, if you're a professional. Now, being a professional doesn't mean you go in and take a few classes and do a canned presentation. Uh, the one thing that I learned when I started sales was it took a lot of hard work. What you had to do was I took and went to seminars, I talked to salespeople, I rode with them. I mean, you really have to put your time in. It's no different than, than anything else. Now, the right. pay is just as good as if you're a doctor or a lawyer, and you know what? It takes you just as long to get your skill or yeah. your profession to that level. Well, that's the thing is many people will commit to a certain amount of education, and they'll say, you know, I'm going to go to school eight years to have this professional income. And, or I can go in sales. Well, the great thing I like about sales is most people will, are willing to teach it to you 
And in a year or two, you can get a great education and be at that professional income level. Uh, I know that we have talked, um, you know, that everybody out there uh, at some level, there's a sales uh, team of most companies. But as far as great professional salesmen, it's a pretty small world. I know we it lived is. in different parts of the country. We knew people. And that many were of in your, uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, a couple of the people that, like, you had looked to along the way, I had worked with over the years. Yep. And we had lived, you know, literally across the country. The higher the US. up you get, the one thing I've noticed, the higher up you get, the smaller the, the same names start <laughs> the getting same thrown names around. And certainly one of those names is is Dave Clark. Now, I know, Dave, um, you, you're semi-retired. You've been out there for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to talk a little bit about um, your background and kind of how the game has changed uh, since 2008. Um, why don't we take a quick uh, commercial break, and then we'll get right in, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, with Dave about uh, what it takes to be a sales professional. More when we return. Real estate today offers incredible opportunities low prices and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with entrepreneur Dave Clark and uh, my dear friend Margot Bush. And uh, Dave, we've been talking a lot about um, uh, the, the mindset of a salesman and you know the, the how self-education is really necessary. Uh, I know that when I was throwing into it, uh, there was a few guys that knew what they were doing and they were making incredible money. And then 90% of the team was starving to death. You know, they were all they didn't have gas money. They were hurting. And the, the few pulled me aside and they said, listen, man, you better self-educate. Here's Zig Ziglar. Here's Tommy Hopkins. And, and what I learned very quickly, I think it took me an eviction to learn this. But what I learned is if you don't self-educate in, in, the, in the direct sales arena, you're going to be out of business and out of your house overnight. The one so thing you have you, to, you're thrown into the pool. The one thing you find out is, like I've always heard, is 80% of the people are doing 20% of the business. Right. 20% of the people are doing 80% of the yeah. business. It's the ones that educate themselves, yeah. the ones that make it a true profession. Right. And uh, tell us a little bit, you know, I was actually uh, running companies and I was in that world till probably um, early 2000, 2002, 2003. And um, around 2004, I started seeing writing on the wall financially and I kind of transitioned into seminars and other things. But I know that when you're selling a product or a service that has uh, f there's a financing capabilities. That has been a big problem, uh, particularly since 08, because during the meltdown, a lot of companies lost their financing. Did you experience that? I experienced well? that. And one of the thing is, is that you have to you have to have more than one finance company. It's like anything else. You have to have backup plans. And right. if if I didn't, if I hadn't have gotten two or three or four finance companies, uh, you would you wouldn't make it because one one will go down or one will shut their financing down or make it hard. So yeah. you really have to be prepared for what's going to happen. What would you say that the biggest challenge is right now? I mean, we talked a little bit beforehand, and I know that you were saying that setting appointments, that was always the trick in, in our business. As you mentioned, it's kind of a numbers game, but you have to have X amount of qualified prospects to see. And then you could, if you did that, you could always count on a certain amount of revenue. 
And I know when I was in the game, we were batting about a 75% holdup ratio. So if we set four appointments in one day, you know, three would hold up on a bad day, two would hold up, two would cancel. Uh, what's it like out there now? Today, it's a lot different. Um, you're having to probably book four appointments to get one. Wow. I'm having to knock a lot more doors. Um, the, the biggest problem is uh, you have the economy. People are afraid to, to let you in their homes or think they're going to have to buy something. And so the whole market Security, is I'm sure, it's, also it's is a security. risk. Security, yeah. Letting and, people in your home. And knocking doors, you know, is, is tough. Yep. Um, the, the biggest thing is that you have to make it fun. Right. The whole key is, is if you go out there, I got to do this, I got to do this, it, you're, you're not going to be able to do it. You well, and I, I know personally with you, you choose to go out there and sell. And, you know, over the years you've had teams put together, but you've actually chosen to just work very little, uh, go out there for a few hours, and you're more of a sharpshooter instead of a shotgun guy. Right, there's two types. You can do a lot, or after you get experience and know what you're doing, I can drive into a neighborhood, and I can pretty much spot the houses that I want to call on. And after you talk to the people at the door, you find out whether you really want to talk to, you know, to go any further. But to organizations today are really having a hard time. Two things, hard to get people that will knock doors. Sure. The telemarketing law, when they ended that in, in the early 2002 or three, yeah, hurt a uh, lot that of killed a lot of, in fact, it right. shut me down yeah. and I had to go back, change my strategy, go yep. back to what we used to do and that was knocking doors. Right. And if you don't know how to change or find somebody that can teach you how to do that, then you'll die right then. So right. I'm still here. It's just that my strategy changed right. and I went back to knocking doors is right. what I originally started out doing and so I was able to yeah. do it again. Well, and I, I think that, you know, the game did change a lot after 08. Uh, but as you mentioned, you just change your strategy. You know, you got to go back and find what was working. And, um, you know, I was actually in the time where the telemarketing was the big thing, too. We'd have hundreds of leads. And then all of a sudden, laws change. And it's like, what do we do now? But you got you to gotta go with it. And I, would you say that even now, if a person got a sales job, let's say even straight commission, is it possible for somebody to go out there and in the first year, earn a very professional income. Oh yes, oh yes, it all depends on them. If they're willing to put the effort in. Sales, if you have a good teaching, a good product, and it's an honest, ethical company, you'll make it, and you'll make right. it easily. Right. Well, I completely agree, and you know, backstage we were talking a little bit about how difficult it is to put a team together these days. When you mention the word, I mean, right when they answer the phone, they say, is this sales? And then they're gone, you know, so it's difficult to uh, bring people in that are, that are qualified. But, you know, I learned a long time ago uh, that, that if you ask three questions about somebody, and whether you're putting a sales team together or you're gonna do a, a, a joint venture with another company or you're gonna form even a multi-million dollar partnership, before you get into business with anybody, I was taught years ago to always ask three questions. And uh, the first thing that you ask is what is their what do they want you know what's their vision or you could say what's their motive and uh, the reason i always find out their motive is because you know everybody out there all the self-help guys talk about motivation and getting somebody motivated but if you think about the word motivation it's derived from the word motive so if somebody doesn't have a strong motive or it's not their motive it's their husbands or their wives or for their kids you literally cannot motivate these people you know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember when I would sit down with big corporations and I would ask them, you know, what gets you jazzed? What's your thing? And they would say, I, I, you know, well, what do you want um, to keep my job? Well, past that, what do you want? Um, not to be fired. Well, after that, what do you want? Um, just to provide for my kids. Okay, that's your kids. What do you want? And doing that for corporations, what I found the overwhelming answer would be is a lot of adults would say, you know, I have no idea. I haven't been asked that for years. I haven't thought about myself for years. Let me get back to you. And that's a real problem because if we don't have something that we're fired up about or have strong motive, then really we can't be motivated. And uh, I know that, that we're pressed for time, um, but, but the second point, I'll, I'll make two points. The second point is that when you hear their motive or you hear their vision, the big thing you have to assess is where was the originality of that vision? Uh, what was the birthplace of that vision when they told you their story? And the reason why that's important is because under great pressure, people always revert back to the originality of things. 
So it's kind of like a boxer. I know you used to do martial arts, uh, we talked about. But a boxer, if you, you know, take a guy that's never been in a fight in his life and you teach him how to technically box, the first time he gets slugged in the face and gets that stress, the only thing he knows is jab, jab, punch. He knows how to box. But if you take a guy that's brawling every weekend in the, in the alley and you teach him how to box, as soon as he gets slugged in the face, he, he tackles you. So under great pressure, people revert back to the originality. And I've seen this a lot of times in business where people will create a partnership. And the pressure might even be good. They might plan this multi-million dollar venture that actually works and there's millions of dollars coming in. And then all of a sudden, under that pressure, they revert back to originality of was the vision put around making money first and then helping people or helping a lot of people and then uh, you know, making money. So I think that there's both. One of the but. things that I found, it isn't always the money that motivates people. Right. It, it's the recognition. That's right. And it's also being a part of something. So if you can get that in your business, you can educate them as you go along. But Absolutely. you're right. Well, we, we want to uh, look at our person's motive. We want to look at where they started, make sure they're about helping people first. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money. Uh, Dave, I appreciate you being on the show. Margo. Sure. Thanks for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And, uh, guys, that's our show tonight. We appreciate you tuning in. And don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody. <laughs>